Hello everyone and welcome to episode 9 of my beginner's guide to Kerbal Space Program. In the last couple of episodes we were designing a vessel to allow us to go to the moon and in this episode we're finally going to do that mission. We're going to go to the moon, we're going to get an orbit about the moon and then we're going to come back. So we need to answer a few problems with this one. Number one, how do we get to the moon? Number two, how do we achieve that capture orbit about the moon? And then finally, number three, how do we get ourselves safely back to Kerbin? So I already have our vessel here on the pad, so let's just click on it and fly. All right, and here she is. This is the vessel we've been building the last couple of episodes. And we're gonna put this thing first into orbit. And I talked about going into orbit uh, a few episodes ago previous to this one, so I'm not gonna talk about it in as much detail as that. But I do wanna point out one thing that is going to be a smidge different this time, is if we, well, I just hit M on uh, my keyboard, but you can also get to this view hitting the toggle map button down here. You can go back to here and then back to here. I wanna go in the map view. I wanna take a particular look at the moon and in particular if I scroll out just a little bit further, this circle here, this white grayish circle, which represents the moon or moon's orbit. And in particular, what I wanna draw attention to is if I bring it down like this to notice that the moon's orbit is exactly parallel to Kerbin's equator. That actually makes our life easier. We'll go to Minmus in a future episode and I'll explain the difference when we do that. But it is much easier to transfer out to another orbit if the orbit that you're starting from is exactly in the same plane as the orbit that you want to go to. You want your orbit to be exactly underneath the moon's orbit. So what that means is I would like my orbit to, as precisely as I can, follow the equator around Kerbin. And to do that, I need to go as precisely as I can in an eastward direction. Now in my getting to orbit video, I did start going towards the east because that's the most efficient way to go. But if I ended up going a few degrees north of east or a few degrees south of east, actually south is this way and north is this way, I didn't worry about it. I just let it go. Now I do want to worry about it. I want to be as close to east as I can because that will make my transfer out to the moon easier. Notice that the eastward direction is a heading of 90 degrees. We have a 90 right there. You can take a look at your heading more precisely by looking down at the number here. The RHDG stands for heading. And I would like to keep that heading at 90 throughout this flight. So that's one additional thing that I am going to take a look at. Otherwise, this is going to be the same deal. So let's go back to our regular view here. We're going to turn our throttle up. We're going to put on SAS. And we're going to light this thing. And again, what I want to do is I want my speed to pick up to about ah, 15 meters per second or so. And as I get to that, I'm going to pitch towards the east, which is towards the right on the nav ball, until my yellow prograde vector gets to about the 10 degree point, and then I'm going to lock it onto the prograde vector. Now I want to take a look at my heading. Notice it's 100 degrees. That's too much towards the top of the nav ball, so I'm going to push down a bit. Again, I'm doing this with the keyboard, trying to pull that prograde vector more down towards the south. I'm going to let it go. I take my hands away from the keyboard, see where it settles out. Still a little bit too far, so I push down again, let it go again, see where it settles out. I would like this to settle out at around, at, well, as close as I can to 90 degrees. It's a little high, so a little bit more towards the north. I think that's probably pretty good. And then I'm going to let this ride. But other than that, there aren't any differences between this ascent and the ascent you saw me do in my previous video on how to get yourself into orbit. Other than this, I do want to say one thing that I didn't mention last time. Orbital insertions are probably the easiest things to kind of mess up, this putting yourself into orbit. If you press the escape key on your keyboard and bring up the pause menu, a really useful button right here is this revert flight button. If I click on it, you can see I can, well, I have two options. I can revert all the way back to the vehicle assembly building, or I can revert my launch to just the beginning of the launch again. 
pretty easy to mess up a launch. Don't feel bad about having to, every once in a while, revert to launch. Nothing wrong with it. But I'm going to hit cancel and I'm going to resume my flight because I'm pretty happy with how this one went. So we'll just cut up to the final bit of the insertion. <laughs> Man, that's as close to an orbit as you can get without actually being in an orbit. I had to cut things a bit too tight. That booster just went dry. We'll stage it. And we're going to use a, we're going to stage our next engine and we're just going to use a little bit of fuel from our next stage to finish this off there we go so we got a an orbit here it's 81 kilometers by 79 kilometers that's pretty good yeah maybe i did build that just a little bit too tightly i do have an issue when it comes not an issue so much but i take way too much pride in not wasting or wasting very very little fuel <laughs> So if you find yourself, if you're using the craft file, which I'll attach down at the in the description, if you find yourself um, having a little bit of difficulty getting into this, in getting into orbit, try replacing those small uh, hammer boosters. No, they're the thumpers, the small SRBs that I had on that rocket, and replacing it with the big ones again. Uh, and then you might not be quite into as tight a range. Anyways, now that we're in an orbit, we can kind of relax. Things get easier from here on in. I turned it without even describing what I'm doing northwards because if I am pointing in a northwards direction like this, these solar panels are guaranteed to get a nice exposure to the sun all the time as opposed to, for instance, if all of a sudden you end up pointing directly at the sun, right? Suddenly these solar panels are not doing very well. But if you keep it perpendicular to the sun which you can get by pointing your vessel directly north or directly south then you always have some exposures a uh, sun are uh, some solar panels getting some good exposure okay let's talk a bit about action groups uh if i press zero now notice how that opens the doors i don't have to right click that's because in a couple episodes ago i talked about action groups if you've forgotten your action groups there is a button in this view that allows you to get into your action groups. If I click here and then I click edit action groups, all that same action group menu that's available in the vehicle assembly building comes up here. And if you start to forget, what, what did I do? Oh yeah, on 10, I had toggle the service bay, which just happened. And on one, I have a whole pile of science. This is for when we first get to the moon. And on two, we have that same science once again. So that's a nice little button to have available to you which is if you want to add in more action groups or edit your action groups or you just simply forgot what your action groups were there's a great button for you to use all right let's get ourselves out towards the moon so we know how this works we know that what we need to do is we need to create a maneuver so we're going to add a maneuver and in order to increase the altitude of our orbit, we need to burn in a prograde direction, which is this icon right here. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to drag it. And in fact, I'm going to zoom out and drag it and drag it and drag it until we get in and around where the moon's orbit is. But the issue is that I am missing the moon. And the reason why I'm missing the moon is because I'm not timing this very well, right? I need to get to here at the same time the moon gets to here now a little bit of here i'll get rid of this for now mad ball there it goes um the moon takes six days to go around in your orbit and it takes you about a day to get out there you can see here our apoapsis is in a day and one hour and 28 minutes from now so that means in the amount of time it takes me to get from here to here, the moon's going to go about a sixth of the way around in its orbit. So I can use that to my advantage and say, well, that means I need to move this. Let's go all the way around. Whoop. So that this apoapsis is one sixth of an orbit ahead of where the moon is now. And you can see now I'm starting to get some, some things happening. We're starting to encounter the moon. Now, if you're finding all this stuff to fiddly, which I often do, don't forget you can adjust things here. Don't forget you can actually enter in numbers directly. You can also, if you click this tab, get this graphic indicator and you can actually play with the buttons here, which can be a lot more precise. So what we want to do now is fine tune our encounter with the moon. So I'm going to select the moon. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to say, focus my view onto here. There we go. And now we're going to take a look at this. So this 
purple dotted line represents our current path around the moon. I would like this path to be as close to the moon as I can get it. If I go back to my maneuver node, let's, I got to click on it from here. There it is. That brings this back up. If I look at these two little arrows here, this moves uh, my, the timing of my maneuver forwards and backwards in time. My scale is now set to 10 seconds. So every time I click on this, it's going to go forward 10 seconds. And if I do that, notice how I think I double clicked by mistake. Notice how it moved just a little bit. I can right click on that so that that number, my closest approach, my moon periapsis remains there. Let's move ahead another 10 seconds. Okay. And now it's down to, I would like to get this down, I don't know, in around 10 to 15 kilometers. That's going to be my goal. Now, I got a feeling if I click it again and go for another 10 seconds, I'm actually going to hit the moon. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to move my scale down to every two seconds. We're going to click again. There we go. Nice. And we're going to click one more time. Well, we're going to click one more time. There we go. I like that. 11 kilometers. I said 10 to 15. That qualifies as that. So we're going to come around the moon like this. So this is going to, the closer you can get to the moon, the actual easier it is for you to make your orbit. But what we've got now is a maneuver that if I execute this 856.7 meter per second burn, right, I will follow this trajectory at this little circle here, we're going to encounter the moon, at which point we are now on this trajectory. Notice how it's showing this trajectory at where the moon is right now, though at the time, our, the moon will be over here. So if you can imagine the moon being over here, this purple path connects straight to this orange path, and we're going to follow around the moon like this. And by the way, if we kept going, we're going to follow this green path, and we're out of here. <laughs> we're on a curb and escape out of, uh, yeah. So we'll, we'll be doing something to prevent that from happening. But right now, we're going to come back to here. And down here at the bottom here, it says that this maneuver node is coming up in 20 minutes. So we're going to time warp. You can press period on the keyboard, or you can actually click up here, whichever way you like. We're going to time warp until we are close to our maneuver node. So down here below, it's telling us how long this burn is going to take. It's going to take 57 seconds. You would like to center your burn on either side of this one minute and five seconds. So if we take 58, let's round that up to 50, or 57, round that up to 58, divide by two, that's 29. I would like to start my burn at 29 seconds. Now, I'm pointing in the wrong direction. See the blue arrow here on the nav ball? That's telling you more the direction you wanna be. You wanna be on this little blue icon really nicely we have a button here to snap to our maneuver and that means it's just gonna stay right on there. All right, so at 29 seconds, we're going to press Z. And go. To give us full thrust. And as we perform this burn, you can see this bar going down. When this bar is down at the bottom, that tells us that we're done. And then I'm gonna go back to map view and I want to take a look at this with, from the moon's point of view. You can see our trajectory here, out climbing, climbing, climbing towards the moon. And as this number gets close, we're going to start to reduce our throttle. So we're going to reduce our throttle now. Okay. And you can see our trajectory coming in. So I'm going to just give it a little bit of throttle. And I'm not looking at the maneuver node anymore. I'm actually looking at my trajectory. And if you want, what you can do is you can right click on that little PE. And you can do that until that gets to the altitude you want. I want it to be between, again, 10 and 15 kilometers. Whoop, I might have, let's click this out of here. No, I didn't overcook it. It's fine. There we go. All right, so that looks great. So, in. Let's take a look here. Well, we're going to be here in 5 hours and 21 minutes. But if you can look, of course, our path towards the moon is not in a straight line, but you can start to see what's happening here. We're traveling on up and we have the moon and we are on an intersect trajectory with the moon. We're closing in towards our moon encounter. Slow this down. There we go. 30, 20 seconds, 10 seconds. 
and boom, we are now in what's called the moon sphere of influence. What that means is, is the game is no longer considering the gravity associated with Kerbin. We are purely under the influence of the gravity of the moon. So let's go back out of map view. All right, you can see how much closer we are to the moon. And in fact, I'm just really, why don't we turn our lights on? We did put some lights in. We have a lights in the cabin and I snuck some lights in here. Now, I'm ready to do some science. This is the first time we've been close to the moon. We are in what's now the high space around the moon. I'm ready to do some science, but rather than right clicking on all kinds of parts, I just have to hit one because I've set up those uh, action groups. So all I have to do is hit the green accept that science button to collect it all. And then Jebediah, of course, has to go out and EVA and collect all of that science and store it back safely into the capsule. So we'll make sure to bring it back down to the surface of Kerbin at the end of all of this. And of course, we won't forget that while Jebediah is out there, he can also do an EVA report. But with all of our science and Jebediah safely back into the capsule, then it was time for us to direct our attention a little closer to the moon. Let's create our you know, we, we don't want to go flying by the moon and then go racing off and then we're racing off into interplanetary space. That's not what we want to do. We want to perform a capture here. So we're going to put a maneuver right here on periapsis. So we're going to add that maneuver. Okay. We're going to click on it to bring up our little toggles. Now, as we come whipping by here, we're going too fast. That's why our trajectory is whipping out past the moon. We need to slow ourselves down so that the moon's gravity can hold us in an orbit. So to slow ourselves down, we need to burn in a retrograde direction. So that is this icon right here. I'm going to pull that and notice what happens. My trajectory is becoming less well, it's hyperbolic. It's becoming less hyperbolic. It's starting to curve its way inwards. And at some point, Boom, it's now in an orbit. Now this is a very elliptical orbit. I would like my orbit to become very close to being circular. So we're gonna keep burning, setting up our maneuver to be in a retrograde direction. There we go. And again, it's very easy to start to find this gets too fiddly. Don't forget you can go down here and you can start. Now our scale is only 0.2 meters per second. So we're gonna increase our scale a little bit to go to, I don't know, one meter per second, I guess. And every time I click on the retrograde icon, I am increasing this burn by another one meter per second. I'm gonna keep going until my projected apoapsis is about the same as my projected periapsis. And you can tell when this is starting to happen because they start to move, actually, in fact, they flipped around there. So once they flip around, these two are very close to each other. They're close enough. So this burn is going to be 292.9 meters per second. Okay, with that done, let's get ourselves closer. So instead of warping with pressing period on my keyboard or by clicking on here, instead I'm going to click on my trajectory. I'm going to use the warp to here button. So we're going to click that and it's just going to zoom ourselves in nice and close, but it's going to stop us before things get a little bit, before we get too close. Now, 16 seconds, that's a full thrust. I'm gonna probably go to about half thrust. I think that's gonna be an easier thing to do and that'll allow me to manage the burn a little bit more easily. You know, the more time you have, there's no rush now that we're in space. So don't feel like you have to be full thrust all the time like you are during a launch. So I'm actually gonna go to half thrust, which means the burn's gonna take about twice as long, which means that I should be starting to burn 16 seconds before I get to the actual node. Here we go. We're going to go to about half throttle. Just no rush. Things are much more relaxed in space than they are when you're flying in an atmosphere. Okay, we're at a, getting close to about the halfway point of the burn. And again, we're getting right at T equals zero on our burn. We're going to just keep going. And once again, when we get towards the end of the burn, we're going to slow our burn down. And this time, I'm really going to take a look at my apoapsis. I want to get my apoapsis down about the same as my periapsis, about 12. And Whoa! I just hit, yeah, everybody does this, I just hit Z instead of X by mistake. So I'm going to fix that right now. Our periapsis is negative. That means we are about to crash. <laughs> we're going to crash into, into the moon. So I'm going to now burn in the opposite direction to undo what I just did. 
Okay, that's pretty good. <laughs> now my periapsis is 11 and a half kilometers. My apoapsis is about 13 and a half kilometers. That is much better. This is why you do things like put in extra fuel. <laughs> we all do the odd silly thing like that, especially if you have butterfingers like me. And if we take a look now, we're in this nice little tight orbit, nice and close to the surface of the moon. And we can hang out here as long as we want. And what I'm interested in doing, of course, well, collecting science. And this is the same deal we've seen before, except for Jeb's EVA report. And notice this one says EVA report from space just above the moon's lowlands. Just like Kerbin, the moon has biomes as well. So we'll be able to do more EVA reports if we get ourselves over different situations. So I'm going to grab this one. And of course, Jebediah is also going to go around and collect the science from the instrumentation and store it all into the capsule. But once he was done all that, before I put him back inside, I did another EVA report. And notice this one says the moon's midlands. The last one said the moon's lowlands. So this is a different one. So we can put Jebediah back inside. And what we're going to do is we're going to time warp. And what we're looking for is changes in the topography below us that might indicate that we're in a different biome. This is a little bit tricky. You can go out and look for biome maps of the moon to help you out, but honestly, in the game, you know, I'm gonna try and do this as if I'm not using external sources too much. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm gonna pretend we don't have access to all these external maps. We are just getting to the moon here for the first time ourselves, okay. See, this geography looks different. Can we do an EVA report here? This says Moon's Highlands. That's new. Yep, so we're going to take that, store that into the capsule. There are also a number of very large and very distinctive craters on the Moon that are each their own biomes. And as I was going around the Moon, I also picked up the Moon's East Far Side Crater, the moon's far side crater and right here I'm getting the moon's northwest crater. Yeah, perhaps not the most imaginative names, but then again that's coming from the guy who named this vessel Fifth Rocket. And I'm guessing that might be the end of it. We're going to live with what we got. We're going to say, we're going to call it at this point. There's still more science for us to collect around here, but we'll have to save that for another day. So what we're going to do is we're going to get ourselves back. So let's, how do we go back to Kerbin? Well, people's first instinct might be to, well, why don't I just, you know, take my craft. There's Kerbin there. We'll point, I guess it would be this way. We'll just point her at Kerbin and go. Well, by this point, I'm hoping in these tutorials, people are recognizing that is definitely not the way you want to do this. Um... Let's picture how this sort of works, right? I'm going to scroll out, and we're going to think about this. I'm going to center on Kerbin so we can get a good look at this. Here's the moon going around in its orbit. Pretend that the moon wasn't there. Let's pretend it's just us, only us, in this orbit, and we would like to lower the altitude of our orbit so that we'll get back into Kerbin's atmosphere. Well, how do we do that? Well, we do that by burning in a retrograde direction. Burning in a retrograde direction slows down our speed and causes the altitude on the opposite side of the orbit to decrease to the point where it enters into the atmosphere. Now, clearly we can't do that with the moon. We're not going to change the moon's speed. But the idea is the same. The moon is going around in this direction. So right now we are moving kind of this direction here. What we want to do is burn in this direction. Okay, because that will reduce our speed relative to Kerbin and cause our orbit to drop from this altitude down to Kerbin's atmosphere, which is what we want to happen. So I'm going to zoom back on the moon. And remember what we want to do is we want to go in this direction. Well, if we want to go in this direction, we need to raise the altitude of this side of the moon's orbit. So that means we need to do our burn on this side of the moon's orbit actually and you'll see you know what I'll start with this because it won't be exactly here it'll actually be more over this way but you'll see why in just a bit I'm gonna start by adding a maneuver here and we're gonna start burning this prograde like this increasing our altitude in that direction until there we go we've escaped the moon's 
what's called the moon's sphere of influence, and we now are in orbit about the, the uh, Kerbin. Now notice that our periapsis isn't close enough. We want to get this periapsis down into Kerbin's atmosphere. So what we're going to do is we just increase prograde even further, and you can see how that brings down our periapsis. But there's another way to bring down that periapsis. I'm going to look at it from this view here so I can get a really good look at our... I'm going to turn this off there at our periapsis over there. I can also move this so it's later, but of course I don't have to fiddle with dragging this around. Down to these little tools here, we're going in 10 second intervals, click this, whoops, I actually went too far that time, until, you know, and if you can, when you get this as low as you can, that's when you know you're in approximately the right spot. We also need to burn more in the prograde direction. And notice every time we burn in the prograde direction, that's bringing our periapsis down even further. We'd like to get that well into the atmosphere. I'm going to aim for about 35 kilometers. So I'm just going to keep clicking until I'm ready to call it. So we got our periapsis at about 34.4 kilometers. That's well into Kerbin's atmosphere. We're burning off in this direction, the opposite direction that the moon is going around in its orbit. So that reduces our velocity relative to Kerbin, despite the fact we were burning in a prograde direction. And that's what brings down our orbital path down into Kerbin's atmosphere. Well, let's do it. Again, there's no super rush with this. You can relax. Be chill. And we're going to reduce throttle as we get close to the end of the burn once again. This time I'm going to leave a little bit left. Let's do a little bit of a burn here. I'm going to stop at about, about 5 and this time I'm going to make sure to hit X and not Z. There we go. That's good enough. I'm going to take a look at what we got happening here. And in fact, what we're going to do, I'm going to get rid of the maneuver node. So we're declutter this. And I want to take a look at my periapsis with Kerbin. Notice where it is. So I'm, I, I stopped in tension a little early. So I'm going to just burn very slightly. Doesn't take much until that periapsis with Kerbin gets around at 35. There it is, 35.6. That's pretty good. And that's it. We are done as far as what we need our engines for. The rest of this is going to be us just following this path down. Once we get into the atmosphere, the atmosphere will slow us down so that we'll end up falling to the surface of the planet. And as Jebediah enjoys his gravity ride back home, why don't we summarize what we looked at in this episode. Number one, match planes with your target's orbit. With the moon, that's really easy because the moon's orbit is in the same plane as Kerbin's equator. But as we move on to other targets, we do want to keep this one in mind. Number two, Time your injection burn out to the moon so that you and the moon will arrive at the apoapsis of your transfer orbit at the same time. Number three, to get your capture orbit about the moon, you need to perform a retrograde burn at your closest approach to the moon or at the moon's periapsis. And then finally, number four, to return back home, you want to place your burn so that it is on the leading or prograde side of the moon as the moon goes around its orbit about Kerbin. And with that, we're going to draw this episode to a close. I hope you found the last few episodes helpful. And as always, I'm going to thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.